Victor Wembanyama got that dog in him is absolutely him and a potential goat. In my last video, we examined how Nikola Jokic should be in the conversation to take Giannis's nickname of the Greek freak, but of the Serbian variety, introducing the freak of the French variety, Victor Wembanyama. The San Antonio Spurs' first overall draft pick will be a force to be reckoned with, and it's time to jump on the bandwagon. This kid is going to be special. The 7'4 phenom with an 8-foot wingspan and 10-foot standing reach has guard skills in terms of his ability to handle it beyond the perimeter and create shots for himself. He makes a 6'4 former NBAer like JJ Redick look about 5'3, but based off that Redick interview he went in for, his physical attributes are far from his best quality. Victor is evidently intelligent, well-spoken, and a kid with a maturely well-suited internal dialogue. We have seen this happen to a number of young athletes who lose, I think, a sense of reality. And they lose that grounding principle of their life. What is your totem? Uh, you know, what you just said about young players, uh, this is something I thought about a lot. And uh, there's, I mean, uh, there's reasons to this because uh, I, I know I'm, I know I'm never gonna turn like this. Like I know I'm never gonna lose a grasp of reality and just uh, do some shit, you know? Because um, I'm, I'm, I know what I want. Like I'm, I'm driven from like from the inside of my heart, and like nothing can put me out of my path. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna make. Like I do everything, I, I do everything I can, so I deserve what I get. And I think some some players are really talented, physically or technically, you know, really, really talented. But their mind isn't like as good as their body is. You know what I'm saying? So they get they get results, they get titles, they get like uh, they get drafted, whatever, you know. But truly, they they don't deserve what they get, you know. If they if they fuck up after afterwards, you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. Um, so, but going back to the totem thing, yeah. I don't want to harp on this, but going back to the totem mm -hmm. thing, because I'm trying to understand this. Is it the game? Is it the competition? Is it this desire to win, to be great? Like you talked about this this drive that you've, you've had, right? You're, as long as you can remember. I mean, you, you knew as a kid you wanted to be a professional basketball player. Is that the is that the totem? Like, what what is it about the game or the the, the competition that you love? It's um, the, my totem is it's something like it's something bigger than, than basketball. You know, it's it's just life. It's just accomplishing yourself inside this universe. You know, and uh, I'm this is I always I always got when when, when I need motivation when I need energy and I feel tired out when I need to fight on the court and it's it's hard I always remember I'm I'm f I'm free in that universe I, I do whatever I can and I know what I want to do and nothing's going to stop me from doing it and I always got that in mind and it doesn't just stop to basketball you know it's, it's about life shout out Redick and the old man in three podcast that just goes to show you the wide perspective that Victor has is going to suit him very well for all the noise surrounding the association because with all the lost touch with reality egomaniacs you'll find in the NBA YouTube media, with all due respect to a few of my peers, but also in the traditional media, and even on the court with certain players, his free-in-the-universe mindset will give him just that, a sense of freedom. Meaning, Wemby will be able to identify what sources of information at any given time are fake, real, impactful, or useless, and be able to properly translate that energy to the court. The social media era is something different, with the kids entering the league today having grown up with all these different platforms, and VW seems to have the proper gauge on reality. Being an elite media studier is as important as any quality nowadays. With the ever so crucial mental side of the game out of the way, which Reddick did a great job of analyzing in that podcast, which I recommend you go check out. Also, go subscribe to JJ. Now we can look at the aspects to the hyped-up Wemby's game, which stand out as one of one. What makes this kid such a problem is the fact that he's a matchup nightmare in terms of how big men won't be able to knock away his dribble or stick with him on the perimeter, while if you put a smaller player with quicker hands on him, 
he can seal them off and proceed to back them down from the post. When a big man guards him, he'll catch them slow to react by faking a drive into his jab step with KG body language before quickly pulling up in their grill. When you put a guard on him, he's shown the wherewithal and off-the-bounce mechanics to maintain a poised dribble and transition to the post. Regarding the question marks from skeptics about his game, these concerns come in the form of, first of all, those worried about his wiry frame leaving him susceptible to being backed down in the post, and second of all, those worried about his durability. Both points are valid, as the strength, height, and reach of players in the NBA is frankly night and day more physical than what Victor experienced in the French League. Also, we've seen how foreign, lanky, big men shooting prospects turned hyped-up lottery picks in Andrea Bargnani and Kristaps Porzingis have fared, proving to be injury-prone and or not fit for the smoke. With that said, neither Bargnani or Porzingis had the combination of ball-handling skills, reach, and post-up prowess that Wembenyama has. The rim protection of Victor is going to be a real issue for players in the association to navigate around as he's all of perceptive, agile, and of course, uber long. Wemby's hand-eye coordination to catch lob passes one-handed, then switch it up by pulling up from off the dribble with his uncanny release point, are also unheard of from any prospect we've ever come across. Regarding his durability, and while it's possible Victor could face some injury trouble early on in his career, knock on wood, I don't think it'll be anything career-altering or anything he can't bounce back from. Additionally, expect the Frenchman to obviously put on both significant upper and lower body muscle as the still mere 19-year-old's career progresses. And just think of how unstoppable a Wembenyama with a rounded out, fully developed frame is going to look like. Frankly, terrifying. The system Victor is about to enter in San Antonio gives me a feeling that his mind and body development will go according to plan. Wemby's going to get every tip and trick in the book from one of the greatest coaches in the history of our game, albeit at the back end of his career, in Greg Popovich, a coach who's had the chance to mentor the likes of legendary Hall of Fame big men like David Robinson and Tim Duncan. Victor is expected to be the next in line to a prestigious organization that's captured five world championships over the span of merely the last quarter of a century alone. The pressure is something different, but so is that of the organization from top to bottom about to be surrounding him. Spurs CEO R.C. Buford has been a top executive for several decades now, and San Antonio's been known for having one of the game's best training staffs as well, so Victor's mentality should fit right in if he's got the proper work ethic. If Victor can build up the requisite NBA muscle for a big man and balance out that weight throughout his frame, it'll help him defensively. In terms of the dribbler that he is, the man's not simply a one-stop shop, one dribble, basic combination guy. He's quick twitched and can pull off three, four, five different combos on one drive while showing awareness of those in his vicinity. The mechanics when Benyama displays off the dribble were well examined by NBA scouts because while it is a bit of a low arcing release point at times, he's damn near 7 foot 5, and where he gets it off, whether it's that fundamental or not, is going to be tough to contest. Changing the release that's got him to this point I don't think is a good idea, as he's by the eye test comfortable in this type of shooting stroke, and aside from the somewhat low dip before he lets it fly, it's a perfectly fundamental shot, and when he both follows through and gets the proper footing, he can put it on automatic. We're going to see NBA teams try to likely, in my best guess, put their biggest guard on him, a guy like Joe Ingles, for example, who's strong enough to hold him off down low, but is quick-handed enough to knock away his dribble. Problem is, if you sag off the slightest bit, he's going to let it fly from 35+, plus, or dish it off, and seal off his smaller matchup before receiving it in the post. You may be wondering, if he'll be too skinny to seal off a guy like Ingles or even a Giannis because he seems lanky, but he only seems lanky because he's got a standing reach as high as a basketball hoop. The man has a well-rounded physique that's going to stand the test of an 82-game season sooner rather than later. Watch this mind-boggling, heavily contested, drifting-in, one-legged three that he knocks down off the bounce for the and-one. 
the combination of perimeter confidence and stature is something we've never seen in this lifetime. If by itself he was a Paul Pierce off the dribble creator with the frame of a big man, he'd be a projected lottery pick with that. What makes Victor the projected number one is the vertical jump. This windmill on the fast break deciphers his off the bounce creation into springy attacks. Even in the half court, he can get enough leverage for a beastly drive into his jab step, followed by this nasty Euro step poster. His unstoppable versatility shows up in the fact that he can be the traditional screen and roller and get leverage for one-handed hammers rolling downhill like this. Guys in the NBA aren't going to be interested in getting on these inevitable posters unless you're Jakob Pertl, so you can expect Victor to have open lanes after they make a business decision by getting out of the way. On a contested three like this one, you can see that aforementioned low shooting dip can be altered to a higher release point when it's heavily contested. On the offensive glass is where he's going to be a nightmare to hold down. A guy with his type of length, athleticism, and pursuit will always be an issue. His standing reach is one thing to worry about, but his standing jump makes him a springy menace. While the physical strength may need to develop the slightest bit, one thing that doesn't need developing is this guy's post footwork. And I think people make too much of the quote unquote he's lanky narrative because he doesn't seem to have any trouble tumbling through his matchup like a bowling ball when it's time to seal off his defender. Man's got underrated strength. After pulling off said seal on this possession, watch how he just extends out with his arms from a few feet outside the restricted area and places it directly over the basket. Insane. Watch the aforementioned hand-eye coordination to fly down like Lewis Hamilton on this roll to the hoop before precisely stopping on a dime and locking in for the reverse catch-and-go lob finish. Combined with his three-level scoring, the versatility to either be a more than elite ball handler or roller, the athleticism to gather momentum for posters, and the nicely in-stride paint protector that he is, Victor Wembenyama is a freak of all freaks between the lines. Right quick, join the 13.8% of my amazing audience that is subscribed by splashing that sub box. I truly thank you for your support, as it's much appreciated. But with the NBA draft going down tomorrow night on Thursday, let me know which prospect outside of Wemby you're looking forward to watching in the association. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.